The other day, I was watching a video about Chaos Game by Numberphile, and I saw him generate a really cool fractal, specifically the Sierpinski Triangle, based on a very simple set of rules. So I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we could replicate that on Scratch? Well, in this video, we will not only be generating the Sierpinski Triangle, but also a bunch of other cool fractals based on the Chaos Game. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually explain the rules of the Chaos Game for the Sierpinski Triangle Fractal. So the rules goes like this. We start off with three vertices of a triangle. I'm just gonna make them like that. And we're gonna start off with an initial point, let's say anywhere within that triangle. Now, we're going to move towards a random vertice. So I'm just gonna label them one, two, and three. And let's say I end up with two. Then I would have to move halfway towards two. So it would be the midpoint between my current selected point and number two. So that's what we're going to be iterating. We're going to continue picking a random point between 1, 2, and 3, and then moving halfway towards it. As you can see, it looks very chaotic, but after a couple thousand iterations, we end up with the Sierpinski Triangle Fractal. Now it's going to be really hard for me to manually repeat this thousand of times, and I'm also not the best drawer, so let's actually code it up. So as you can see, I've opened a new Scratch project, I've imported our pen extension, and I've also made our background black. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our first block called Draw Triangle Fractal. So this one will be used to generate the Sierpinski Triangle. Uh, I'm not gonna run without screen refresh yet because I want to let you see the process of the dots kind of moving on the screen. So we'll want to erase the entire screen first, right? So I'm just gonna drag in and erase all, and then I'm gonna drag in a repeat loop and let's say repeat 100 uh, for now. We're gonna increase that later, but right now we're gonna keep that at a low value. We're going to do pen up, so you know our pen doesn't start drawing when we don't want it to draw. And I'm going to set our pen color to pick random from 1 to 200 just to make it look a bit more snazzy. So now let's actually implement our rule. We'll need a variable to store a random integer from 1 to 3. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a variable called rand, it can be for the sprite only or for our sprites, doesn't really matter. Click on OK. And I'm going to make two new variables called X and Y just to store the position of the vertice we end up moving towards. Now, let's actually set our random variable to pick random from 1 to 3. So that will help give us a selected vertice. And we're going to drag in our conditionals, which will be if random equals to 1, if random equals to 2, or if random equals to 3. So I'm just going to do if random equals the one first, and the point I want to move towards will be that top point of the triangle, or the apex point, if I use that correctly. And we're going to set our x not to 0, but 0 minus x position. Now you might be wondering why? Well, this will be basically giving us the distance of our x position right now to 0. So let's say if we have an x position of 100, then it will return negative 100. So we have to move negative 100 x to reach 0. We are going to do the same thing for y, except that this time we're moving towards 180 because that's about the top of the screen. And I'm just going to put in our y position instead of x position. So that's pretty good already. And we're going to use the same logic for the other two points. So I'm just going to duplicate what we have right now. Um, we're going to say if ran equals to 2, then I want to move to that bottom left vertice. So in that case, our x would be about negative 180, and our y would also be negative 180. Finally, we're going to do that for the final bottom right vertice. So I'm just going to duplicate our rand equals to 2 conditional. Um, I'm going to change that to if rand equals to 3, and we're going to put in 180 for x, right? Because we're moving to the other side. Now we're actually almost done for this fractal, right? Because all we have to do is actually move towards that point. But for the sake of efficient code, we can actually delete our if rand equals to 3 block because since rand is from 1 to 3, if it's not 1 or 2, then it has to be the third vertice. So we won't actually need that. Now we're just going to move towards that point. So I'm going to put in change x by x divided by 2 because remember that we're actually moving halfway towards that point. And we're going to do the same thing for y, so change y by y divided by 2. Finally, don't forget to put in a pen down at the end of the loop because now we're actually drawing the dot onto the screen so we can see it. 
Let's test this out by clicking on our draw triangle fractal block. And yes, we can actually see our fractal sort of appearing on our screen. Now, right now it's not that impressive because we've only done this for 100 times. So now I'm going to simply increase that to 20,000. So now we're going to get a nice crispy fractal. And we're also going to click on Revenant Out Screen Refresh to ensure that everything happens in an instant. And yes, would you look at that? A beautiful Serpinski triangle fractal. And you can actually see the detail inside because of all the different colors. Please take a moment to take this in and appreciate it. We have barely written a few lines of code and we get this. That is the beauty of Chaos Game. Now, I'm actually not satisfied yet because I still want to try out a bunch of other fractals using Chaos Game. So I went to Wikipedia and found this other square fractal that can also be easily generated with a few simple set of rules. This one works with four vertices of a square, but there's a twist. It's that you cannot choose the same vertice twice in a row. That's actually pretty easy to implement because we'll just make another variable to store the previous vertice. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new block and we're going to call this draw other cool fractal because it doesn't actually have a name. So uh, yeah, make sure to tick on run without screen refresh to make sure everything runs in an instant. So we're just going to duplicate everything and put it right under this new block because the process is pretty similar. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make our variable to store the previous vertice. We're going to call it previous vertice or vertex since it's singular. So we're going to click on OK. Um, again, it doesn't really matter if it's for all sprites or for the sprite only. And we're going to set our previous vertex to rand at the end of our script. So then when we run it again, we'll remember what rand was last time. Now let's add in our other vertice for our square. So I'm going to duplicate that and we're going to say if rand equals to 3 plug the old stuff back in. We are going to adjust the x for rand equals 1 to negative 180, so it kind of goes to the top left. And for our new vertice, we're going to simply set that to x 180 and y 180, so then it will go to the top right. Now we're going to add in the code that will prevent us from choosing the same vertice twice in a row. So I'm going to drag in a repeat until loop from our control section and what I'm going to put instead is repeat until not previous vertex equals to our rand set our rand to not pick random from 1 equals to 3 but pick random from 1 to 4 because it's 4 vertices and right before that I'm just going to plug in pick random from 1 to 4 so that our rand resets every time we run the loop. So that's it for this fractal and to test it let's drag out our draw other cool fractal and click on that. And yes, look at that fractal. We have replicated it almost to near perfection. And it looks pretty good too. Um, I intentionally chose it because I thought it looked pretty cool. So I wanted to recreate it. Um, and yeah, I think we've been pretty successful. That's one of the things I really love about coding because it gives you the ability to flex your creative muscles and take in things from the world and recreate them by yourself. If you're wondering what I'm doing on the screen right now, I just speed ran another fractal using the Chaos game. Uh, this one's actually called the Vixec fractal. Uh, it's quite famous, um, and it also looks pretty mesmerizing. If you're still watching right now, first of all, congratulations on sticking with me throughout this process, and I truly hope that you've also found this very amazing to create. One challenge I do have for you though, is to search up Chaos Game on Wikipedia and see if you can recreate a fractal of your own choice based on this method. Once again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more Scratch tutorials in the future. Peace.